worship and say, your house, we hope it's okay. We're going to start you off with some really good praise music this morning. Go ahead and type in the comments, hallelujah or Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We're going to go ahead and get started with our praise. Come on and clap it up with us. Let's go, band. Ready? Hallelujah. Come on. There it is. There we go. Come on. Yeah. He is a hard fixer. Mind regulator. He's a mind regulator. Jesus, Jesus, your name is Jesus. Savior, King, Lord, you are everything. Never empty. When, when I'm hungry, I'm never empty. Water when I'm thirsty, he satisfies me. Water when I'm thirsty, he satisfies me. his name is J. Yeshua, Jesus, Jesus, your name is Jesus. Savior, King, Lord, you are everything. Thank you. 
deserve our love, Lord. You deserve our praise. You deserve the glory. You deserve the glory. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. We give you all the glory. Christ alone. You are Christ the Lord. You are Christ the Lord. You are Christ the Lord. so happy that you're joining us here online. We are happy to be here as a family to share with your family as we continue the celebration of Jesus Christ. I know you guys have been celebrating all day yesterday and for some of you even the day before and we're going to continue that celebration as we reference and we adore Christ our Lord. And so listen, Pastor Dio and I have two special guests that's joining us this, joining us <laughs> this morning which is Maximus and Bella. Hi. 
Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're happy and honored to be here with our family as we celebrate with your family. And so, Pastor Dio, I know God has given you a mighty word this morning as we continue the celebration of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm so excited for this word. I think this word, it is such a timely word. Let me tell you something. As we get started with this, I want you to make sure you have some form of taking notes. It could be electronic. It could be uh, on paper and pencil. Whichever way it is, I want you to take some notes. In fact, I want you to share this out. Go ahead and invite some people to come and watch this because I believe that this message this morning is going to be one that's going to absolutely bless you and your friends and loved ones. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm excited. Listen, I'm ready for the word. I'm excited about what God is going to speak through the man of God. But before we do that, since we have Maximus and Bella with us, I just want to get them to share this morning. I know you have your children watching, your family watching. And so we just want to share and have them share what Christmas is really about, right? So Maximus and Bella, is Christmas about Santa Claus? No. Is it really about like, did I get all the gifts I wanted on my list? So tell us, Bella, you go first. What is Christmas really about? It's about Jesus on the cross dying for our sins. And on Christmas, it's actually his birthday. And it's also about spending time with your family. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Come on, clap that up. That is so good, Bella. Amen. Maximus, what about you? What is the reason that we celebrate Christmas? What's the true reason? to celebrate Christmas is that we could spend time with our family and that we'll celebrate when Jesus is born. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Very good. Listen, we teach our children really what Christmas is about. And I challenge you in this moment, if you haven't already, some of you may have shared the story of the birth of Jesus throughout this Christmas week. But if you have not, you have an opportunity to do it now. Share with your children, your grandchildren, your family members, the story of Jesus Christ. That's what Christmas is all about. That is the reason for this season. And so I want to make sure that you don't let this week go out, that you don't share that story of Jesus to your family. Listen, it's about the environment that you set in your home. And we're blessed that we get to set an environment and teaching our children how to worship. We teach them how to pray. And I believe that even at the end of uh, Pastor Dio preaching, we're going to have them pray because I'm confident that they know how to pray because we teach them that. And so I want to encourage you as our family are coming together to worship and share with you, make sure your family is coming together to worship on a continual basis. Bring your family together to glorify God and to talk about God and make it make it a mandate that for you and your house, you will serve the Lord. So listen, go ahead and grab your Bibles or your Bible app so I can read the word of God to you. We're going to pick up on the same scripture that we read last Sunday. Amen. And Pastor Dio is going to continue to give us a deeper revelation into that word. Amen. If you go to Matthew chapter 1, I want you to go down to verse 18. I'm going to read for you 18 through 23. And it reads, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was a spouse to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought in those these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and she shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel. Interpreted is God with us. Amen. Let us pray over that word. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to read your word. We understand and know that there's countries that Bibles are not even allowed. Mm -hmm. And so we're not taking this moment for granted. We thank you for your word, for your revelatory word. We pray now that this word would take root in our hearts and minds and allow transformation and acceleration to happen within every single one of our lives. We thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. And somebody say, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Listen, before I even get started, 
Like, I just have to acknowledge how amazing it is, sweetheart, Amen. to be here and able to yes. minister yes. with our children. This is the first Amen. time the that first we're able to minister right next to my boy Maximus Amen. and Bella Amen. in front of you all. And they're here sharing the stage. And Amen. you guys did such a good job. Whoa, 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 whoa. Can you let them know how much you appreciate and encourage them? Let, give show, us some hearts. Give some hearts and put up some, maybe some hand claps or hand raises, letting them know just how awesome they did. You guys did awesome. High five, Great guys. Job. High five. Great job. Awesome. Great job. Awesome. Hey, don't leave me hanging. Thank you. <laughs> give me some love. Amen. Amen. You guys Amen. can go ahead and take your seat in the audience. Amen. While daddy preaches this morning. Amen. So awesome. So awesome. Such a privilege. Uh, teach a child in which direction to Amen. go. You know, and that's so key for us to do, to continue to do so. In fact, even in talking about that, I'll tell you, for those of you who are familiar with our ministry, you know that there's four pillars that we live Amen. by. The first pillar is that of love. The second one is live. The third is lead. And the last is legacy. And of course, this morning, even with the scriptures that you read, Amen. These four pillars are all encapsulated inside of the scripture. Amen. And the, and, and the thing that I want us to begin to unpack is this idea of a calling. Mm. We all have purpose. Someone say, I have purpose. I have purpose. See, sometimes you can go through life, you can go through a difficult time. Have you ever been there before? There is times that I've been hit so hard, my web, if you would. You know how a spider has its web, and that is its whole world. And the moment that something hits the web, it begins to shake. And if it hits it too hard, sometimes that spider will become paralyzed. I've been in a position before where my web was hit so hard that I began to get distracted on whether or not I understood what my calling was. Wow. Have you ever been there before where something hits your web so hard that you have to remind yourself that, you know what, I still have purpose. I might have lost this thing in this past season, but I still have purpose. It didn't come out and didn't pan out the way I planned, but I still have purpose. Come on, write that in there. Say, I have purpose. purpose your mouth will literally begin to design your life. And I, you might not be 100% clear on your purpose, but the moment that you begin to vocalize and say, I have purpose, the moment you begin to do that, something begins to happen. The Bible says that the creation eagerly, Eagerly, meaning and moaning, awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. The creation is literally awaiting you to lock into your purpose and your calling. And the moment that you do, it is released of the groaning and the pain. Come on, somebody. Someone is catching this right now. Right? I know it's the day after Christmas. I know I'm getting started a bit fast here. But it's so important that you recognize that you have Purpose. Mm. Say, I have purpose. I, have purpose. I don't care what might have happened. I have purpose. Amen. I'm not going to be convinced otherwise. I have purpose. When the enemy tries to lie to you and whisper in your ear <clears throat> that you are not going to make it, that you're not going to become all that you had dreamt to be, and he's trying to tell you that it is too late for you to do it, and you're too far into your age and your life, that is a lie from the pit of hell. You have purpose, purpose. and it shall come to pass. Someone type that in right now and say, I have purpose. I have purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You coming out the gate. There's, there's purpose. I get excited. I know my wife gets excited Amen. in talking about purpose because so many of us are walking around and not having a clear line of sight into what our destiny is. Amen. Who am I? supposed to become why am i seeing the things that i'm seeing why hasn't it panned out the way that i had planned these things all begin to shroud purpose and i want to talk about this tonight i want to talk about purpose you might hear me say purpose you might hear me say calling i'm referring to two of the same and for tonight's message or rather this morning's message i want to refer to it as the calling Amen. the calling Come on, someone say the calling. The calling. There are four things that I want to break down when it comes to the calling. When it comes to your calling, 
I want to talk about the look of a calling. Mm. I want to talk to you about the inconvenience of a calling. I want to talk to you about the cost of a calling. And I want to talk to you about the outcome of a calling. Let's get into this. The first one is the look of a calling. When we're looking at this text, and there's so much, and feel free to, to, to jump in as you'd like, babe. But when we're talking about this text and what is being revealed in this text, keep in mind that Mary has been impregnated by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. There has been a calling that has now taken place. And what we get to see now is from the perspective of Joseph. In other words, we're seeing what Joseph's reaction is to the moment to which Mary and he were called to lead the early life of Jesus Christ. Mm. What does it look like? I'm going to tell you what it looks like. It looks like Mary and Joseph are engaged, and here they are now pregnant mm. with no explanation. <laughs> it, it, think about it for the sake of in those days, um, the Bible, the commandments were, if a woman was to be pregnant uh, outside of marriage, if she was to be with another man while she is either uh, engaged or married to another man, that the moment that took place, she was to go into the public and be stoned. Mm -hmm. She was to be, her life was to be taken from her. Think about what is happening, the dynamic. I think it's important that we understand the context of the time. We can't just read the scripture and think, okay, this is just a story. Well, no, we have to understand the dynamics. Like, it is expected that everybody knew that Joseph and Mary were not married. They weren't married. They were merely engaged, and yet they're engaged. How in the world are we now going to share that she has become pregnant? Mm. I can't say that I impregnated her because, of course, at that point it would contradict the very truth of what God and the Holy Spirit had impregnated Mary. Amen. So he can't say that I impregnated her. Plus, he would still be outside of the law because they were just engaged. So it is what I like to call a messy miracle. Mm. It's a messy miracle. It's a messy yeah. situation. The Bible speaks to us about the murmurings that would happen, the people talking. People are, keep in mind, as you start reading this story, that Joseph and Mary actually went running. They had to go on a run. They had to escape because of the murmuring of the city. And so they find themselves in this difficult circumstance in a messy miracle. And I believe, I truly believe that many of you are trying to understand what my calling looks like. And I'm trying to get you to understand this morning that sometimes your calling is going to look like a hot mess. Ooh, my, my, my. That sometimes your calling is not going to look like, the, like a, a, a garden full of pink roses. It's not going to be smelling uh, of, or, or, uh, or, or, or creative. It's, it's not going to be a moment of inspiration and impartation. Sometimes your calling could be a moment to which it looks messy. I believe that some of you are in a messy place right now. I believe that some of you are encountered some messy circumstances and some messy situations. And the grace of God is that he will look at a messy situation and cause that messy situation to be a pedestal of his glory. Amen. One of the messiest circumstances, if you would, Mary becoming pregnant while she's engaged. They have never had intimacy, and yet now they have to convey to a people that they're pregnant. And God is saying, I'm going to take what looks like a mess and let it be the thing that turns around the world. Amen. I want to encourage you this morning that literally God has stepped off his throne, has instructed me to share with you this morning that the, the mess that you might be in right now is only a catalyst to your calling. Amen. I understand that sometimes it doesn't look like it's supposed to look like, and it might look a little messy, but God knows Amen. that sometimes in that mess is the most incredible, incredible calling. Amen? Amen. So the first thing was the look of a calling. It's not going to look like 
what you think it might look like. It's not going to look like what you would expect it to look like. Sometimes it's going to look very different than what you would want it to look like. It's going to smell different. It's going to be the appearance of it is going to be different. But please understand that the calling is the calling. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. The next thing that I told you I wanted to talk about was you have the look of a calling. Then I also want to talk about the inconvenience of a calling. Imagine the inconvenient time. Isn't it funny how God's timing is not necessarily our timing? Yeah. That what we think is the right timing for something that we thought by the time we're 25, we're going to be this, that, and this. And by the time that we're 35, we would be accomplishing this and that. I'll be married, living inside a mansion, right? And, and our timing, we would design something a certain way. But just because we designed it that way does not mean that's God's plan. Amen. His calling, his timing sometimes is an inconvenience. Imagine Joseph and Mary in this circumstance where they're engaged like butterflies, taking walks in the neighborhood, and Joseph kicking game to Mary, <laughs> talking about how beautiful she is and the aroma, her perfumes, and just, just, just kicking his game. Kicking his game is an African-American colloquialism. means that he is uh, uh, saying sweet, sweet whisperings in her ear. And so here Joseph is uh, literally courting Mary, his his girlfriend who now has become his his fiance and it is at this time when things are just looking amazing and looking fantastic that uh, Mary comes to him and is like yo I'm I'm pregnant, pregnant. My, my, my. like uh, in all fairness my wife and I were engaged uh, for a year uh -huh. before we got married and if she would have told me, if she would have told me that she was pregnant and then she would tell me that she was impregnated by the Holy Spirit, <laughs> I don't know that I would have responded the way Joseph responded. Joseph was able to be in this predicament, in this situation where now there is an inconvenience behind the calling of God. It's not always going to be at the timing that you would anticipate or expect. You can ask, why now? Uh -huh. why, why, why couldn't you wait until we were married? Or why couldn't you have waited until I, before I proposed to her, so I don't have to have this quote-unquote egg on my face. Because arguably, as a man, now you have to explain to your buddies that your wife or your soon-to-be wife is pregnant by the Holy Spirit. That might not go along too well for most people. There is an inconvenience of the calling. It's mm. not going to be always what one would expect it to be. It's not always going to be in the timing that it would be. Sometimes the calling can happen while you're at a high place. Yeah. Sometimes things can be happening perfect in every area of your life. It, it could not be going better. And out of nowhere, God will tell you, this is what I want you to do. Mm. Look at Abraham, one of the fathers of our faith, whom he was told, I want you to go yonder. No instructions. They didn't tell him specifically where. The Bible says that God was like, I'll tell you where when you get there. I just need you to go. Think about the uncomfort. If God was to say, hey, I need you to move to another state. Well, what state? I tell you when you get there. Just start driving. There is an inconvenience that happens when it comes to the calling of God. And I believe that sometimes the more inconvenient the timing is, it is only because the greater the calling that's on your life. 
that when he is speaking and he speaks clearly that this is what I'm wanting you to do and what I'm wanting you to go up, go after and this is how I want you to go after it, th th there is a, a command, there is a mandate that you just have to do what you have to do because just because it's not to your timing and just because it's not convenient to you does not mean that it's not time for God to get it done in your life. You might be like, well, 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 Pastor, how do I know? How, how would I understand this even better? I would tell you that you have to then really begin to pray. Look at what happened with Joseph in this circumstance. He had to meditate. He had to pray. In fact, an angel appeared to him, meaning that he was already in a pocket of sensitivity spiritually, saying, Father, what is it that I need to do right now? How am I going to navigate this situation? And it was at that moment that, a, that God sent an angel to give him clarity on how to handle the situation. And the beauty is that when God confirms a calling in your life, I'm telling you right now that when he speaks, speaks, there's going to be someone else that will confirm the very thing that God told you. That's why there's prophets in the Word of God because a prophet is not going to tell you something that is new. It would only tell you something that is confirming what God already told you. That there's something inside of you. The angel of the Lord told Joseph, you are to a father this child, you are to raise him up, you are to call him Jesus. I was the one who impregnated her. I want you to be the one to help her in and navigate this thing. There is a confirmation that took place. And I believe that you yourself, those of you who are watching right now, that there is a confirmation. There's a confirmation that will happen that when you hear that calling, you're going to put yourself in a place and a posture of humility, of prayer, of seeking the guidance. Father, is this what you're telling me? I don't want to miss it. There's that beautiful worship song, don't do it without me. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're doing in this season, Father, don't do it without me. My God, I feel that. That is for somebody this morning. Your prayer needs to be, Father, don't do it without me. Father, don't do it in 2022. I don't want you to do it without me. I am here to say yes to the calling. I'm here to say yes to what you have in store for me. I don't want to miss this moment, this voice, Father, this inkling in my spirit that this is the time and that time is now. Don't miss it. Amen. Don't do it without me. And so Joseph had to understand and take uh, adherence to the inconvenience of the calling. Mm -hmm. The next thing I'm going to go through is the cost of a calling. Mm -hmm. There's a cost. But type that in. There's a cost to my calling. There is a cost to my calling. There's a cost to my calling. There's a cost to my calling. It's important that we understand that. There was something that I read early on that's always stuck with me as I've gone through my journey of life. And essentially it's this. We either can play now and pay later, or you can pay now and you play later. What does that mean? That there's a cost. I have to put time into this thing now. I, when I'm understanding and I'm clear on my purpose and I'm clear on what God is telling me to do, I need to start putting my hands to the plow and get to work. Mm. I think there's too many believers who have gotten a peek into their destiny. Too many believers who God has given a vision, a dream as to what it is that they're supposed to do, but what they're doing instead is sitting on their hands and sitting with hesitation, not sure, not sure on whether or not how much action they need to take. I'm telling you right now, this morning is for you, that you are not to sit on your hands no more, that Jesus Christ himself went ahead and cursed the fig tree when the fig tree was not producing the very thing that it was purposed to produce. He was hungry in a season. He was hungry and he said I want to go to this fig tree. I want to command. I want to draw from it what I need to sustain me. Jesus is saying I need to sustain my kingdom. I want my kingdom to flourish and I've impregnated you with the seed but you're sitting on that seed. God is saying this morning that my calling has been made clear and I need you to put your hands to the plow and begin to push it forward. 
No longer being afraid, for God has not given you the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Someone say, I have clarity of purpose, clarity in my calling. I'm no longer going to be afraid. I'm going to put my hands to the plow because I understand there's a cost to my calling. And Father, I'm willing to pay the price. Jesus Christ paid a price. He was clear on his purpose and he paid a price. But the price he paid came with rewards. I'm trying to get someone to understand that it's going to come with a cause, but the rewards are going to be there. That leads me to my last point, mm. that with the calling, you're always going to have some incredible outcomes. Because it was so many individuals that I've come across that have had such incredible callings. There were people who had hesitated and they were paused and they were paralyzed and they were not moving forward. They were not mobilizing forward until they received clarity of their calling. And the moment they received clarity of their calling, then things began to go into motion. Doesn't matter how high the waters might have been. If they felt that they were drowning, they continued with their calling. I'm trying to talk to a believer this morning who is listening right now that God has made clear what your calling is. It is time for you to begin to step up and step out and step out of the boat. Who cares what others might say? Who cares who might remain in the boat? When God says it's time for you to get off the boat, then at least you made an attempt. I'd rather go ahead and make the attempt than sit back and watch other disciples wonder whether or not they should go after their calling. I'm talking to a believer this morning who is watching this thing right now that you you have been instructed by your call, by your purpose, and it's time for you to move and step off the boat. Stop walking on water. Let that faith begin to mobilize. Do things that others cannot do. Do things what others might think to be impossible. God said, when my calling has been upon you, you're going to go ahead and achieve the very thing that I've called you to achieve. Come on, someone shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Type it in. Type amen. Type amen. Hallelujah. Your calling is now. I know that Nelson Mandela went through some difficulties, but he remained focused on the calling. I know that Dr. Martin Luther King faced some difficulties as well, but yet he began to continue to march forward. And we all know his speech about, I had a dream. Someone watching right now has a dream, has a calling, has a purpose that God has made clear. And it's time for you to begin to pursue that bad boy. Begin to vocalize it. Begin to set yourself accountable that in 2022, I'm going to accomplish the calling. I'm going to go after the calling. I'm not going to hesitate based on what God has instructed me to do. The gift, you have gifts, you have gifts. God will give you uh, expansion and acceleration. Your gift will make room for you. The moment you start to move, know that Peter was not able to walk on the water until he started to move. He would never know whether or not he could walk on water unless he started to get off the boat. Someone who's watching right now is being confirmed in their spirit, and I'm speaking to you prophetically this morning that God's calling and purpose on your life is only a, 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 a motivation. It is an inclination to you, for you to get moving and start pushing forward. Nelson Mandela understood his calling. Dr. Martin Luther King understood his calling. Oprah Winfrey understood her calling. Elon Musk understood his calling. Steve Jobs of Apple understood his calling. I'm trying to get you to be very clear on what your purpose and what your calling is. Mary understood her calling. Joseph understood the calling. It was inconvenient. It was going to cost him something. It was not looking like what he had planned for it to look like. But when he understood that it was a calling of God, when he understood the angel telling him, this is my assignment. This is what I'm asking you to do. This is how you're going to go about it. Once he understood that clarity of thought and nimbleness in his spirit, he knew that he was not going to hesitate no longer. I am here to confirm in someone's spirit that just like each one of these individuals who I mentioned, and there's countless others who have also experienced calling and their purpose, I'm here to tell you that this morning, this is a moment for you to lock into your purpose to lock into your calling because you are a child of the most high God and Jesus Christ himself understood his calling baby we're talking about the life of Jesus Christ and yes Mary understood her calling and Joseph
have understood her calling, but we worship and praise Jesus Christ, the one who understood truly his calling at all costs. And because he pursued the calling, he was able to turn cities upside down. He was able to go into places and cause miracles to take place. The Bible says that he went ahead and created so many miracles that no book can contain the number of miracles that he was able to perform. I believe that someone who is watching right now has so much gift in you, so much raw talent inside of you that has yet to be released. But the moment that you step into your purpose and the moment that you step into your calling, that there's going to be so much greatness that comes out of you, flowing out of you like a living water, a river, like a running river, that people are going to look at you and be in amazement because of the number of miracles that are taking place only because you started walking in your purpose, because you started walking according to your calling. You're not no longer hesitating, but you're moving forward. You're pushing and you're transforming at an accelerated speed. You are an accelerator. Everything you touch increases. God is accelerating favor all around you. I'm trying to get someone to lock into this word and make a decision. Just as we're celebrating today the life of Jesus Christ, the birth of Jesus Christ, somebody who was clear on purpose, it is the same for you as the daughter of the Most High God, as the son of the Most High God. You have been called according to his name, and once his word goes forth, nothing in heaven or hell can stop his word from coming to pass. Heaven and hell will, will, will break away, but his word shall remain. His purpose, his word in your life shall remain. Main. Somebody type in those notes right now. Say, I'm clear on my purpose. And if you're not that clear, then at least say, I have purpose. Begin to declare that thing. I have purpose. The enemy might be lying to you. No, I have purpose. My purpose is great because I am a child of the most high God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory Hallelujah. God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we just bless you. Thank for you, that Lord. Word. We give you the glory, Father. We Thank give you, you the, Lord. Er, the honor, God, that you clarify what our call is, what our call looks like, the sacrifice we have to make for the call. We thank you, Father God. There's an outcome, God. There's a pulse to the call, but there's an outcome. Yes, God. And so, Father, we thank you this morning for the man of God speaking with potency as we pray. He speaks with power as we pray. And, Father, we thank you for the revelation within the word and in the text that, Father, we hear it. So now we're going to run with it. And, Father, we just pray all those that are watching online now point your hands toward your phone point your hands toward your television point toward it now and just begin to receive this decree and this blessing yes. that understanding moving forward now God that everyone that is watching those that have heard the man of God speak they will begin to embrace and identify the call that you put on their lives so, Father we pray that you would give them the wherewithal and the strength and the courage to step off the boat and to do what you called them to do and those that are already in the midst of pursuing the call we know there's a call so Father Father, we pray for their strength now. Give them the strength necessary, God, yes, to continue God. to obey what you've called them to do. Now, God, we pray for your protection. We pray for your prophetic mantle, your prophetic insight, Father, that they will tap into this word and begin to flourish and go forth now. In Jesus' name, we pray. We decree it to be so, for it is yes and amen. Go ahead and type yes and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes Thank and you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, God. I am Thank excited you, for your future. Amen. I am excited about the purpose and calling amen. on your life. Thank you, Jesus. I believe that this word has come forth to give you clarity, to give you encouragement, to give you inspiration, to confirm in your spirit the magnitude of of the purpose and calling that is on your life. Amen. This is not a coincidence. It is not a coincidence that you're watching this this morning. Amen. It is not just happenstance. I believe this to be a divine moment. Just as we're celebrating the King, Jesus Christ, we're celebrating his birth. 2,000 plus years later, we're still celebrating God because he sent his only son who was very clear on their calling. That is going to be your testimony. Amen. I pray right now in the name of Jesus that everything, every calling, every ounce of purpose that God has placed inside of you shall come forth in the name Amen. of Jesus Christ. Somebody type in those comments. Amen, amen. and amen. amen.
It's been so awesome to be with you this morning. Listen, we don't want to allow this moment to go by, not a, not a moment to go by without putting a seed Amen. in the ground. Let this be a seed that's going to shake your 2022. Uh -huh. Let this be a seed that's going to go ahead and confirm exactly what we've been talking about, the calling. Matter of fact, I want you to go ahead and type in your notes as you're giving your seed. Type in my calling, my calling, my calling, my calling. The seed is for my calling, my calling, my calling. Get clear on my calling, my calling. Father, make and expand my calling. Whatever it is regarding your calling, I want you to type that in. Father, clarify my calling, expand my calling. Help me see my calling. But I want you to make sure that you tie this seed to that of a calling because your calling is magnanimous. Your calling is absolutely incredible. Amen. You are a daughter. You are a son of the most high God. And there's no way on earth that we would have the opportunity to celebrate such an amazing king who was able to operate in such a level of grace, purpose, and a calling. There's no way that we would serve him without him also giving us the same gifts Amen. that he had which is to operate based on our purpose and our calling. There's different ways to give. You can give by Givelify. We have an application. You can download uh, Kingdom Acceleration on your Givelify app. You can also give via text to give. The number is appearing there on the screen for you. You can also give with Cash App. The majority give via Cash App. Our Cash App handle is dollar sign accelerate now dollar sign accelerate now and you can also give on our website if you go to acceleration.church but whatever you do put a seed in the ground father in the name of jesus i pray for every seed that's going into the ground i pray father that it is multiplied a thousand times more according to deuteronomy 111 we thank you for this purpose seed we thank you for this seed based on clarity of their calling and we pray god that these things come to pass in the name of of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I hope you've enjoyed this message. Amen. We've enjoyed being with you this yes. morning. If something blessed you from this message, in fact, I want you to go ahead and literally start sharing it out. Yes. Share it out. Go ahead and tag me. Share it out. Type in what it is that moved you. And I want to go ahead and reshare your comment. I want to reshare what, what, what you felt, what moved you with regards to your purpose, your calling. Get that clarity and I will help keep you accountable. You put it out there, let you know I'm becoming clear on purpose. I'm becoming clear on my calling. So make sure you tag me. I would love to hear from you. We love you.